Uh oh, looks like some slimes washed up on my island. So anyway, I'm just gonna blast them. But there's a problem here. There's no indication that I'm even hitting them. Many games implement something called hit flashing, which means the enemy flashes in a single color for a split second and that lets the player know they're hitting them. Let's see how we can use visual shaders to implement this in Godot. Let's Godot. So this is the slime scene. We're interested in the sprite 2D node. And if we click it and come over to the inspector, the first thought might be to open up visibility and go into modulate to change the color of the sprite. The problem with that is that modulate does not let you change the color to white because it only multiplies the color with the sprite. So you can make it fully black or you can tint it in some other color like yellow or red, but it can never be a full color or a full white. For that we have to go down to material and we have to create a new shader. Choose the visual shader type and name it hit flash. Now click on the shader to open it in the shader editor. Right click and search for color and double click on color parameter. Let's name it tint. We will enable the default value and this white default value will do just fine. Now connect it into the color and you can already see the sprite has turned completely white. Ok, but we want to choose when the sprite is white, we don't want it to be white all the time. So we will add another parameter, which will be a boolean parameter. Let's name it enabled. And as a default value we'll set it to false. Then to actually make use of it, let's add an if node under conditional, functions and if. This node will compare two values and it will output another value based on the result of the comparison. So we will compare if our boolean parameter enabled is equal to 1. If it is then we want to use our color parameter. So drag the output of the color parameter node into the a equals b slot and then drag the result of the if node into the output color. If we go back into the inspector we can open up shader parameters. Here we see our enabled parameter and our tint parameter. If we click on the enabled we'll see our sprite becomes white. But when it's not enabled our sprite's color is completely black. To fix that we'll add a color node. So in input all color. This node outputs the original colors of the sprite. So drag that into a is less than b and a is greater than b and our sprite's colors are back. To actually toggle the hit flash let's use an animation player. You'll notice I already have an animation player here with some animations for idling, jumping and dying. If I add another animation here for the hit flash it's just gonna override those and that's not what we want. So let's add another animation player and let's call it hit flash animation player. Create a new animation, call it hit flash and for this I use the length of 0.2 which is generally good because you want the hit flash to be really short. So on the first frame let's keyframe the enabled parameter by pressing this key and let's set it to on and for the last frame let's disable it and keyframe it again. So now we have our hit flash animation that only lasts 0.2 seconds. Now let's hop on into the slime script. And there's a lot of stuff here but we're only interested in the on hurt box body entered function. This is the function that gets called once the slime is hurt so it reduces its health and it makes it die. This is a great place to actually trigger our hit flash. So first of all we have to hop onto the top of the script and get the hit flash animation player. So on ready var, hit flash anim player and just get it from the scene tree. Then back in the on hurt box body entered function we're just gonna call hit flash anim player dot play hit flash which is the name of the animation. So we can finally start blasting our slimes but wait why are they all flashing? This is a common pitfall when it comes to shaders in Godot. Once you add a shader to a scene's material all other instances of the scene share the same shader so once one triggers all of them trigger. To fix this we go down back to the shader and in the resource we check local to scene. And now finally it works just like we planned. Thank you for watching.